Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. In Uttar Pradesh, political pyrotechnics now in full gear. Rahul Gandhi attacking the Prime Minister in his constituency of Varanasi, saying youth lying on the ground, inebriated, drugged out, the Prime Minister counter-attacking. Can the UP ke ke Rahul and Akhilesh put up a fight against the BJP, against Modi, Shah and Yogi? Or will the result be the same as 2017? That's my top focus on the news track. Big escalation in battleground UP. PM's blistering attack on Rahul Gandhi. Jinke apne hosh thikane nahi hai, wo UP ke mere kasi ke bachcho ko nasheedi keh rahe. PM mocks UP ke ladke. Mal bahi hai, baking nahi hai. Rahul returns Modi's fire. State set for State of War 2024. Political fireworks are exploding as we move closer to the Lok Sabha elections. Prime Minister Modi, who was in his constituency of Varanasi today, came out all guns blazing at Rahul Gandhi, taking on the Congress MP for his remarks on the UP youth being drunk and drugged out and also RG's comments on the Ram Mandir. Rahul Gandhi returned fire by accusing the Prime Minister of misleading the youth of Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> Chants of Jai Shri Ram and Modi reverberated in Kashi as the Prime Minister returned to his Karma Bhumi. Ahead of the general elections, Prime Minister Modi set battleground Uttar Pradesh on fire. The Prime Minister was in top form in his constituency as he launched a blistering attack on Rahul Gandhi and the Congress. The Prime Minister tore into Rahul Gandhi for calling the youth of Varanasi alcoholic. कल मैंने देखा वाराणसी में यूपी की सच्ची हालत सड़क पे रात को हजारों युवा शराब पिए सड़क पे लेटे हुए वाराणसी में भाजा चल रहा है शराब पी पी के पूरा आपके आपके युवा Congress के उराज परिवार ने क्या कहा? वो कह रहे हैं और काशी की धरती पर आके कह रहे हैं। काशी के नवजवान, यूपी के नवजवान, नशेड़ी है? ये कैसी भाषा है भाई? मोदी को गाली देते देते तो इन्होंने दो दशक बिता लिए, लेकिन अब ईश्वर रूपी जनता जनार्दन पर यूपी के नवजवानों पर ही ये लोग अपनी फ्रस्ट्रेशन निकाल रहे हैं। Then came the takedown of Rahul Gandhi's comments about Ashwarya Rai Bachchan being part of the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishtha ceremony. से पूछना चाहता हूँ आपने Ram Mandir का फंक्शन देखा? देखा? उसमें आपने एक ओबीसी चेहरा देखा, एक दलित चेहरा देखा, एक आदिवासी चेहरा देखा, नहीं, उसमें एक नहीं था, उसमें आमिता बच्चन थे, अश्वरीय राय थी, नरेंद्र मोदी थे। इनको काशी और आयोध्या का नया स्वरूप बिल्कुल पसंद नहीं आ रहा। आप देखिए अपने भाषणों में राम मंदिर को लेकर कैसी कैसी बातें करते हैं कैसी कैसी बातों से हमले करते हैं मैं नहीं जानता था कि कांग्रेस को प्रभु श्री राम से इतनी नफरत है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आल्सो हिट आउट द कांग्रेस एसपी अलायंस इन उत्तर प्रदेश हर चुनाव के दौरान साथ आते हैं और जब परिणाम नील बटा सन्नाटा आता है 
तो एक दूसरे को गाली देते हुए अलग हो जाते हैं माल वही है पैकिंग नहीं है इस बार तो इनको जमानत बचाने के लिए ही बहुत संघर्ष करना पड़ेगा डेवलपमेंट पुश एंड पॉलिटिकल सिंबलिज्म द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स वाराणसी विजिट वॉज हाई ऑन बोर्ड He visited OBC icon Sant Ravidas's temple where the prime minister unveiled a statue and a museum. He also hit out at the opposition India bloc accusing it of trying to create a caste divide. Hamare desh mein jati ke naam par uksane aur unhe ladane mein bharosa rakhne wale Indi Gathbandhan ke log Dalit vanchit ke hit ki yojnaon ka virodh karte hain. Ye log जाति की भलाई के नाम पर अपने परिवार के स्वार्थ की राजनीति करते हैं उन्होंने जन जन खातों का भी मजाक उड़ाया था इन्होंने डिजिटल इंडिया का विरोध किया था इतना ही नहीं परिवारवादी पार्टियों की एक और पहचान है कि अपने परिवार से बाहर किसी भी दलित आदिवासी को आगे बढ़ने नहीं देना चाहते दस वर्षो में विकास की गंगा ने काशी को सिंचा है काशी कितनी तेजी से बदली है ये आप सभी ने साक्षात देखा है यही मेरी काशी का सामर्थ्य है स्टेट अवार्ड 2024 थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर एज वेल एंड ट्रूली बिगन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे Rahul Gandhi there attacking the youth of Uttar Pradesh calling them inebriated uh, saying that they are under the influence of alcohol and drugs lying passed out on the streets of Varanasi the prime minister using that as a counter attack so far there was no alliance between the congress and the samajwadi party now that the upk ladke have come back together will the india alliance be able to pose a meaningful challenge to the bjp which has its own modi and yogi duo versus rahul and akhilesh or will the result likely be the same to talk about this big battle of uttar pradesh which will really set the tone and determine the final result of the lok sabha elections we've got with us on this broadcast sanju verma national spokesperson of the bharatiya janata party squaring off against a mohan kumar mangalam national spokesperson of the congress shantanu gupta who's a biographer of yogi adityanath the uttar pradesh chief minister and a political analyst from lucknow amitabh tiwari joins us on this broadcast election strategist and researcher and rashid kidwai who understands the ins and outs of what's happening inside the india alliance and the congress I want to go across to Sanju Verma first. Given that the BJP was announcing publicly that it is unlikely that they'll be able to come together in an alliance, now that there has been an alliance announced between the SP and the Congress, do you think that the challenge in Uttar Pradesh is tougher than if they had fought separately? The result may still be the same, but would you accept that the challenge is now visibly tougher than if they'd fought separately? Uh, you know rahul first things first if you look at uh, lok sabha 2019 bjp had a 49.98% vote share the uh, you know uh, bahujan samaj party had a vote share of 19.43% the samajwadi party 18.11% and the congress 6.36% so basically bsp plus sp plus congress together stood at 43.9% Vis-a-vis five zero, the almost fifty percent vote share of the BJP. And mind you, uh, the reason I speak about vote share is that uh, you know, despite the fact that the Samajwadi Party has been doing considerably well in terms of notching up vote share, when it comes to translating that into winnable votes, uh, they fail miserably. And uh, the limited point I'm making here is simply this: if you look at Lok Sabha 2014, we won seventy-three out of eighty seats. that is a success rate of 91.25% in lok sabha 2019 the bjp got 62 out of 80 seats uh, which is a strike rate of almost 78% and look at the congress i mean it has completely been washed out wiped out routed it's tata bye bye in uttar pradesh for the congress because the congress last time in 2019 got just one seat from uttar pradesh just one seat and the samajwadi party had an alliance with bsp but managed to get five seats 
the BSP got 10 seats. The moment the BSP got more than the SP, the pre-poll alliance of the BSP and SP crumbled and fell apart. And if you notice, right now, the tally of SP is actually down from five seats to three seats after they lost the by-elections in Rampur and Azamgarh. Azamgarh supposedly one of the strongest erstwhile bastions of the okay. Samajwadi Party okay. clan. Okay. So I'm coming back to you in a moment. Mohan Kumar Amangalam, this is a script that Uttar Pradesh has seen earlier. The UPK Larkade bombed in 2017. What makes you confident that the result this time might be different? Secondly, uh, this attack that Rahul Gandhi is mounted on the youth of Uttar Pradesh, given how the Prime Minister has been able to turn around attacks, turn them into mobilizing factors, you know, ask the UPK Larkade, are you drunk? Are you, in, in, are you uh, in, under the influence of drugs? He's typically done that in the past. Is that a wise line of attack given the past track record of Prime Minister Modi counter-attacking using the attack of Rahul Gandhi? What makes you think that this alliance could potentially pose a challenge to the BJP in this Lok Sabha election? Mohan Kumar Amangla. Answers to both your questions, Rahul. The first answer being that every election is different. Every election has different issues. And now I think the people of Uttar Pradesh have the benefit of seeing a failed double engine government that is back in power and they've seen seven years of bad governance. As far as Mr. Gandhi's uh, speech goes, it wasn't an attack on the youth of Uttar Pradesh. It was an attack on the governments in both the center and in Uttar Pradesh. There are about 115 crores of liquor sales that happen in Uttar Pradesh every day. That is a 35% increase in the last two years. In FY22-23, the revenues from liquor alone in Uttar Pradesh was about 41,000 crores. 14% higher than the previous year. UP's median age is 20. It is literally our youngest state. UP and Bihar are our youngest state. I think UP is even younger than Bihar. It's it, In size, it mirrors the same size as Pakistan. Yet its per capita income is half that of Pakistan. If you look at where UP has gone in the last, you know, seven or eight years, its share, the growth in its, its share of the industrial sector and the gross value add has gone to 0.6% from 9.9% earlier. Look at Bihar, the number of factories that have increased in Bihar from 2004 to 2020 is 100%. Haryana, 159%. Assam, 200%. UP, only 69%. Look at the life expectancy in Uttar Pradesh. It is 66. That parallels to states like Ethiopia and Gabon. 66% of the children between the ages of 6 to 59 months are anemic. This is the situation in Uttar Pradesh. And this despite the fact that for every one rupee that the state of Uttar Pradesh contributes to the exchequer, it gets 2.73 rupees back. Unlike the developed states like Tamil Nadu, that gets only 29 paise back. The Uttar Pradesh chief minister is great on pronouncements. He's been talking about a trillion dollar economy. But if you look at the compounded annual growth rate, it's been 8.28%. They need to grow at 32% to get to that level. So all the people, okay. the youth so, of Uttar Pradesh have seen, have been pronouncements, platitudes. They haven't seen results and that's why this election will be different. Shantanu Gupta, you are the biographer of Yogi Adityanath. The fact is that while UP has made some progress under the chief ministership of Yogi Adityanath, Kumon Kumar Mangalam is right. If you compare with some of the other states, especially those in the south, a state like a Kerala or a Tamil Nadu or a Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh is still nowhere in comparison. So it may have progressed relative to a low base, but still is a laggard in comparison to some of the other southern states. That's the argument that Mon Kumar Mangalam is making. I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Kumar Mangalam uh, understands how you compare things, right? You compare UP with the previous UP. So if I, if I am a statistician, I will compare UP of today with the UP of 2017, right? Uh, as he got a very low base. See, UP was at ease of doing ranking around 14, 15. Today, we are the ease of doing ranking in top five. Our economy is number two, right? Now, best of the investors are coming to UP. Last time when we had the investment summit, we had a 34 lakh crore rupees of investment promises. And every year, UP chief minister does a groundbreaking ceremony. The ground GBC just uh, completed. UP has now 10 uh, working airports. In the smallest of the city, you can go in the morning and come back. To Gorakhpur, you can go and come back. Bareilly, you can go and come back. Kanpur, you can go and come back. You being a reporter, just, just ask your field reporters, uh, using the Purvanchar Expressway, using the Bundelkhand Expressway, now the Ganga Expressway. So the people of UP realize now, earlier the average electricity in UP was 13 to 14 hours. Now it's 22, uh, 22.5 hours of electricity in even the smallest of the town, right? Earlier electricity used to only come in Malayam Singh district when he was in government or Mayavati's district when, when she was in government, right? Now all the 75 districts of UP get electricity. If you get 10 more hours of electricity, that anyway increase with GDP by 1.5%, right? UP is a very, very different state. Now every every investor is flocking to UP. And you have seen the GBC 
what happened because i have born and brought up in up and currently we are i am debating you from up so up is a very different town see in okay. rahul's yatra in rahul's yatra just give me 10 more seconds rahul's yatra what we are what we are hearing kas batao kas batao narendra modi is saying i will make this india the third largest economy and rahul gandhi only vision is tell me your kas right so the comparison is very clear uh, to the people of up Uh, Amitabh uh, Tiwari, I'll, I'll come back to you, Sanjuji, in just a moment. Amitabh Tiwari, how is this likely to play out on the election battlefield? The UP ke ladke part two, it bombed in 2017. Uh, can it succeed this time round? In your view, how is the coming together of the Samajwadi Party and the Congress in this late alliance likely to impact what may have otherwise happened in the absence of this alliance? See, what this alliance does is that it does neutralize the tina factor and it does pose a challenge for the bjp in terms of achieving 80 out of 80 seats in uttar pradesh if there was no alliance then i think because of the positive fervor around the ram mandir uh, inauguration and the popularity of prime minister modi in the state i think bjp was uh, looking well poised to achieve the 80 out of 80 mark now however this alliance faces some challenges the first challenge that it is a comparatively much weaker alliance compared to a mahagathbandhan so bsp is not part of this alliance it is likely to hold on to its jata vote share so whatever uh, 8 to 10 or 12% vote share it gets is likely to help the bjp with a split of the opposition vote now rld which was part of this alliance has actually moved towards the bjp so it's a double blow to the alliance in that sense because it 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 takes away some of the jata votes and it takes away whatever influence or seats the india bloc might uh, have targeted to win in the western up now the example of 2017 is 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 very important here because this alliance is likely to face a challenge in seamless transfer of votes congress party got 6% vote share in 2019 lok sabha elections if you break it down it is largely 3% is a my vote or a muslim yadav vote and the other 3% comes from upper caste non yadav obcs and dalits this is the vote which is unlikely to transfer to samajwadi party what this alliance also does is that it gives an impression that it has been done to prevent the consolidation or rather prevent the split in the vote of the minorities which could lead to a counter polarization in already a highly charged environment uh, after the ram mandir uh, uh, issue so i think the 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 alliance has challenges samajwadi party itself though we say that congress has a poor track record in terms of strike rate samajwadi party also in 2014 and 19 has also had a very dismal track record in terms of uh, winning the seats so it 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 remains to be seen uh, whether they'll be able to uh, make a significant dent i think the dent so they make a just... dent it could be a small dent relatively small dent relatively medium sized dent but it's unlikely to make what you're saying a big dent and a change, trend reversal you can reduce the tally may not be 80 may be lesser but you're saying it may not change the trend line now rashid kidwai uh, this attack that rahul gandhi is doing jaat batao jaat batao shantanu gupta says you know that's the one that is tracking when the prime minister saying there are four castes and he's focusing on women he's focusing on farmers he's focusing on the youth he's focusing uh on you know the poor when rahul gandhi keeps saying jaat batao jaat batao do you think this is likely to work in his favor or could it actually boomerang but i want we don't know how it will play out but it is i find it very fascinating that the prime minister goes to varanasi his own constituency uh, supposedly it's like a pre poll uh, you know kind of campaign and he chooses to target mr rahul gandhi whose party has one lok sabha mp has 6% votes so he is not targeting samajwadi party directly he is not targeting the second largest party that be bsp the congress is the fourth or the fifth political party there so this is rahul why do you think he is doing it why do you think he is doing it we don't know yeah that is i i want to know from you i want to know from fellow panelists so somewhere rahul gandhi who is not a presidential candidate by either india alliance or by the congress party mr uh, you know prime minister modi's fascination for mr rahul gandhi whatever he says or does is something it's very interesting i think mr modi knows how to beat uh, rahul gandhi uh, on a political turf and by making up his comments and remarks etc so that tells you that rahul gandhi no matter that he is politically a lightweight or novice or whatever 
uh, you know, not a very astute politician, but he continues to draw maximum amount of attention of Prime Minister, BJP. The no, but it's not that illogical, Rashid Kidwai. Rashid Bhai, you know, if I'm, an, if I'm a boxer, I want to take on the weakest possible boxer. Rather than have a boxer who can punch me back, just as from a boxing perspective, you want to take on whoever you think is the easiest to make mince meat off. Is that why Rahul Gandhi is being attacked by the Prime Minister? He'd much rather take on. He'd much rather take on. He'd much rather take on Rahul Gandhi than somebody else. Rahul for what? For one Lok Sabha seat. Okay, let's. See, BSP has ten Lok Sabha seats. Okay, let let Sanju Verma explain this. ये आपने बीएसपी से कोई सेटिंग की हुई है विच इज वाई यू डोंट अटैक मायावती शी इज अ मच बिगर शी इज अ मच बिगर पोलिटिकल थ्रेट द कांग्रेस इज वन सीट एंड यू कीप अटैकिंग हिम द कांग्रेस इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन द बीजेपी बॉकलाइन दे आर स्केड ऑफ राहुल गांधी विच इज वाई दे कीप अटैकिंग हिम ओके यू नो द फैक्ट द बीजेपी is rattled uh, nice to hear that all i will tell is rashid kidwai uh, without being offensive i have respect for him you are living in la la land you are living in kukus land and i will tell you why you know this is not about uh, the congress party having just one seat in uttar pradesh and you know the bjp still training its guns at rahul gandhi the larger point is this rahul gandhi's hypocrisy needs to be called out his bluff needs to be called out he has been ranting on and on and on about how the bjp is anti obc whereas mr kidwai and of course your audience rahul kaval will appreciate that 36% of prime minister narendra modi's cabinet currently consists of obc no, but sanju you aren't answering the question why isn't he attacking mayawati who's a bigger threat more mps or akhilesh yadav who's the much bigger threat if he's actually May the I... weakest as you say he is why attack him you know rahul what is wrong with you you are rahul kaval you are not rajdeep sardesai to break my chain of thought can i please finish i will answer mr kidwai's concerns as well let me first tell you rahul gandhi's bluff needs to be called out he goes at cambridge he goes uh, to varanasi what is the common uh, you know uh, narrative that he's been peddling and falsehoods at that that the bjp is anti obc whereas let me complete like i said 36% of modi's cabinet 41% of our nlcs and 38% of our mlas are obcs be it you know babulal gaur be it uma bharti or after that be it shivraj singh chauhan for more than 20 years the bjp had obc chief ministers including mohan yadav now who is again an obc so the limited point i'm making is bjp is not anti obc as rahul gandhi would have everyone believe now why is bjp attacking rahul gandhi Are you telling me, Rahul Gandhi? बोलता है, अरे देखा है, वो अमिताभ बच्चन वहाँ पर डांस मारता है, अरे आप यदि जाओगे ना, राम मंदिर में आपको क्या दिखेगा? वहाँ पर आपको आयशोरे राय नाचती हुई मिलेगी, आपको मोदी दिखेगा, आपको अंबानी दिखेगा, आपको अडानी दिखेगा, but आपको एक भी OBC में मिलेगा. Are you telling me this devious man, whom we refer to as Papu, is actually not a Papu? He's not a buffoon. He's very devious. Are you telling me his unbridled devious buffoonry should be allowed to go scot free without anyone nailing his bluff i don't think so have you seen mayawati say bjp is anti obc have you seen samajwadi okay. party is akhilesh so let mohan kumar mangalam explain to our audience what's rahul gandhi's problem with ashwarya rai bachchan he keeps attacking ashwarya now you attack her once it's understandable he does it again and again and again and again while ashwarya wasn't there at the ram mandir pran pratishtha katrina kaif was there Kangana Ranaut was there. Kangana, in fact, was dancing as well, swaying as it were. He could have said, "Kangana is dancing." He keeps saying, "Ashwar, you can make a mistake once." He keeps repeating the same mistake. Yeah. Rahul, you know, Rahul Gandhi no, is so okay, no, no, Sanju, how let, you let, lost? Let, let us speak. Let him speak. Rahul Gandhi, no, no, watch it, Sanju. That's not can fair. I, let us I mean, speak. Come this on, come is on, unnecessary. Come on, Rahul. I am surprised at how you've lost your powers of deduction, or all of you have, ever since Mr. Gandhi said this. I mean, the Prime Minister himself is famous for speaking in riddles and. making snide remarks uh, 50 crore ki girlfriend jazi gao etc etc he speaks in you know he doesn't take names mr gandhi is using whether it is ashwarya rai bachchan or it is mr amitabh bachchan he's when he takes their names he is not talking about them actually as much as what they represent 
which is they represent no, but how does aishwarya represent something no, one second no, no, if you say kangana is no, 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 with, with respect sir you're not going to let me finish no, i am going to let you finish her, but you must no i did interrupt her as well okay, but this ahead, is the question I, I you know what, i will not insult you for interrupting me go ahead okay that, thank you i appreciate this now aishwarya rai bachchan is a human being right she's got a family and she's probably watching or maybe somebody will send her this clip and she'll wonder boss why am i i wasn't even there why bring me into this debate I mean, name Kangana, Rim Katrina, they were there. Make the same point, but make it in a way that people don't wonder, boss, why is he saying that she wasn't even there? I mean, I, I, I don't think that's what people think. I think people are intelligent enough, including Ashwarya Rai Bachchan, is intelligent enough to realize that why he's taking her name because she represents basically that part of society which is getting all of this growth that we're talking about in this country. Going to Shantanu's point earlier when he said that Mr. Modi is talking about becoming the third largest nation. What Mr. Gandhi is talking about, and again, is that this growth is unequal and this inequality is something that we have to rise up against. He's talking about inequality both in representation in positions of power as well as inequality in terms of share of wealth that is going to the larger or the, you know, the smaller proportion of the country. I'm not going to use, you know, personal terms, offensive terms against the Prime Minister as Sanju does against Mr. Gandhi. But I'll just say that the BJP needs to be a little more consistent about what their position is. Is it that they're going to say that they have a tribal as a president or a Dalit as a president or so many percentage of OBCs? Or is it that they don't see caste like Mr. No, no, Modi no, says? And okay, they see Shantru Gupta, do you buy this Obama's, argument that I think even... Which Sanjay, one is it? Okay, okay. Supriya Shrinath also made the same point earlier that Aishwarya Rai Bachchan is not Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. Aishwarya Rai Bachchan is everything that she stands for. That it's the metaphor of a Bollywood actor dancing. You know, these Bollywood wallas dancing. That's the point he's making. Don't pin him down on why is he saying Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. Aishwarya is not Aishwarya. She's what she represents. Do you buy that? No, Rahul, I, I think, I, Rahul, you, you were also there in the Pran Pratishtha. I was also in Ayodhya with some channel deep day. I'm sure you must have seen the sentiment of the people, right? Why Rahul, why Rahul Gandhi is mocking that sentiment? Narendra Modi is saying that my party, my son was standing behind the Ram Mandir movement. And Rahul Gandhi is saying, they came Ashwarya Rai dance kar thi. Whoever she want to say, maybe you change the name, but it's not the point even Ashwarya Rai. Even I'm fine. We say whatever name. But why you are mocking the whole incident? And and for, if Rahul Gandhi is listening, Kameshwar Chopal was the first Dalit person who put the first brick in 1989. They were people from Ravidas Akhada, which is considered to be a Shulka Akhada, if you want to mention the term. They were people from Valmiki Akhada there, right? They were people from Sant Sama, they were people from Bollywood, they were entrepreneurs, they were politicians, they were people from every every era of the society. There was Dalit, OBC, everyone there, right? Now, if you start going uh, uh, in everything, that Jat Batao, Jat Batao, I think, I'm sure who's listening to him. Okay, so Sanju Varma also wants to come in on this issue. Me, Shantanu Gupta says, Thik hai, Aishwarya Rai Bachchan is also what she represents. He's not fussed about the name. But do you think it's offensive to Aishwarya to constantly get named? And potentially shame for something she didn't even do. She wasn't there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That means in Goran okay, anyway. Sanjuru wants to come in. Rahul, she's offended. Rahul, may I please? Rahul. No, no. Kumara Manglam says you don't know she's offended. She's not saying anything about being offended. To me, offended. Yeah, you ask her. Yeah, you are. Know, she's not saying anything about being offended. So why are you offended, Sanju Varma? Thank you. Okay, Rahul, and I think you know me too well. I have tremendous respect for you. The jive I took uh, about you and Rajdeep was on a lighter note. Uh, you know, having clarified that. You know, tell me, Rahul, please, and everybody on this panel, including Mr. Kidwai, you know, uh, who believes Rahul is uh, God's gift to mankind. Uh, the fact of the matter is, Rahul Gandhi, let's be very clear, is the prime ministerial candidate of the Congress. He has clearly made it known to anyone who knows anything about politics, ki bhai, main pradhan mantri banna chata hu. Banenge ki nahi ye, alag baat hai. Tell me which prime ministerial candidate says, to a journalist, बताओ तुम्हारी जात क्या है कौन जात है तुम्हारी अरे वो अमिताभ बच्चन वहां डांस मारता है दिस वॉज हिज लैंग्वेज अरे वो ऐश्वर्य राय को देखा है वो नाचती है वो तो नाचने वाली है अरे प्रियंका चोपड़ा तो एक नाचने वाली है कम ऑन इज दिस ओके नो दैट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट बिकॉज वाई वाई हिंदी में नॉट बी हिज Prefer. No, one second, Sanju Varma. Sanju Varma, one second. No, because one I, second. No, one second. I need to respond to that. No, no, one, one second. No, Rashid, Rashid sahab, respond to Sanju Varma. In the manner in which this is said, ki wo naach rahe, you know, especially in the Hindi heartland. I grew up in Allahabad, Lucknow, Dehradun, several of those places. My dad was posted here. This, the way it's framed, ki wo naachti hai, naachne wali hai. It's, it's not right. It's not proper. You know, this is. It's not. And you come from Bhopal. You know. 
do you think this is the right way to say it wo nachne wali you know it has a certain connotation which if you translate it into english yeah. if you translate rahul, it into english no. it doesn't but rahul, it's like very awkwardly phrased yeah rahul unlike uh, my friend sanju varma i don't wear a political color so therefore i am saying what rahul got rahul gandhi had said about ashwar rai was grossly wrong unfair particularly in the context of the long friendship that gandhi and bachchan have enjoyed dating back to you know three uh, generations and three decades i have written extensively about it i think he should not have said and i have told you in another program that this was unlike uh, rahul gandhi he is being ill advised whatever whoever is advising and he must clarify apologize make amends etc what our sanju varma is, is being saying going uh, you know the fact of the matter is there is nowhere uh, uh, rahul kawan you can correct me not once has congress party india alliance rahul gandhi has said he is a presidential candidate for 2024 it is the bjp narrative which is putting rahul gandhi versus narendra modi that is a politics uh, okay okay let me go kumara mangalam respond even rashid kidwai is saying that the manner in which it's framed given the history of uh, friendship between the two families even if you cast that aside for a moment ye nachne wali hai nachti hai you know it's just framed in no. hindi in a very awkward fashion nobody would like to rahul. be called a nachne wali no 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 rahul rahul first of all i'm i'm a tamilian but i grew up in delhi to nachne wali aur wo nachri thi mein bahut bada antar hai please don't use the term nachne wali he did not use that so let's he not uh, misconstrue what he's saying on purpose please don't talk when i'm talking sanju 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 will you keep quiet or i will talk over you i promise you i will okay. I, sanju varma let me complete i can't i can't i can't run i can't run a debate right where everyone is speaking at the same rahul. time this is not put a, fair put a mic give mohan kumar mangal the voice. opportunity to make his point one go on please like i said rahul i'm repeating myself here while saying that he was merely using her as a symbol and when he said what nachri he was saying that what they're showing on media what he's saying essentially is that what you see day in and day out on the television what you talk about day in and day out what the narrative that is being built is really only about these people who enjoy all the wealth power and fame in this country you don't see people like yourself the true problems in this country aren't being reflected and being voiced basically you remain voiceless is what he's telling the public there it is not about any particular one particular individual at all okay let me so that there is no confusion and no distortion let me play out the comments he's made on uh, aishwarya rai no shantanu wants to come and make a point but before that uh, and because this has become a big political issue let me just run exactly what he said uh, and the manner in which he said it and then we'll uh, continue this conversation is this right is this framed wrong is it mildly inappropriate is it wholly inappropriate so we'll discuss that take a look at this first हिंदुस्तान के गरीबों के बारे में मीडिया में नहीं दिखाना मीडिया में कुछ दिखाना है तो ऐश्वर्या राय को नाचते हुए दिखाना है नरेंद्र मोदी जी को 24 घंटा दिखाना है अमिताभ बच्चन को वहां पे दिखाना है जो देश के मुद्दे हैं उनके बारे में नहीं बोलना आपने राम मंदिर का फंक्शन देखा देखो ना सारे बिजनेस वाले देखे नरेंद्र मोदी देखे नाम के लेके आ रहे अमिताभ बच्चन दिखा अश्वरी राय देखी इनका हिंदुस्तान है तुम्हारा है ही नहीं उधर देखो भैया पाकिस्तान में क्या हो गया ओ भैया उधर देखो अमिताभ बच्चन ने नया डांस मारा ओ देखो भैया वो प्रियंका चोपड़ा नाच रही है करते जाओ भैया करते जाओ जितना करना है करो मजे लो ओके लेट्स गो अक्रॉस टू शांतनु गुप्ता ऑन दिस इज नॉट कॉलिंग हर नाचने वाली दैट्स हाउ द बीजेपी इको सिस्टम इज ट्रोलिंग एंड कंफ्यूजिंग इट इज कॉलिंग हर नाच रही थी नाच रही थी इट्स ऑकवर्ड टू बट इट्स नॉट एज ऑफेंसिव इज कॉलिंग समन अ नाचने वाली शांतनु गुप्ता नो वन सेकंड संजू जी लेट हिम वॉच स्पीक शांतनु गुप्ता around there two issues one how he is calling the people in bollywood someone ashwar rai who won miss world for us and got glory to us one is how you are talking about amitabh bachchan who is a legendary star that's one second how you are talking about the whole consecration ceremony right 
the the crores and crores of people of india want that there are, there are people from all realm or or, or domains there how you are talking about those ceremony his idea basically because he wanted caste census be the crux of this election and the and the, and the neta of caste census nitish kumar came to this side right that is frustration that he is talking about that why caste is not the topic he is trying to include that but he is making a fun of it while 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 narrating that right so one is like how he is talking about people in bollywood which is a industry loved by everyone and second is how he is talking about the whole ceremony i think that's the bigger point okay uh, sanju verma wants to come in he doesn't call her a nachne wali nach rahi thi is different from nachne wali the two cannot be conflated sanju verma wants oh. to come in okay now i will you know and this, nobody should take offense to this because i'm just making an analogy sanju verma sits here on national television and says that rahul gandhi is not an idiot he is simply i b i o t rahul gandhi is not a duffer he is simply d u f f e r Rahul Gandhi is not a moron. He is simply a moron. Sanju is a moron. Sanju is not a nice language. Sanju, Sanju no, that's no, not right language. Sanju, 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 S
that is what the opposition still has not been able to understand that's number one okay. and you asked a question about and a very serious question about why is modi targeting rahul i mean and why not mayawati or akhilesh it's a national election it's, it's not a vidhan sabha election rahul gandhi is his main competitor though he is lagging by 40 percent uh, 40 percentage points as per your mood of the nation so he will be targeting rahul gandhi he will target mayawati or akhilesh when the vidhan sabha election comes see because by targeting him he is trying to portray that he is much uh, 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 lighter competitor when compared to him and since 37 percent of the voters as per your exit poll in 2019 say that their main voting consideration is the prime ministerial face it's a very good strategy to constantly target rahul gandhi and see it him suits, a... which is the point i was making it suits and i'm out of time yeah. so mohan no one second I, who wants to have the last word mohan kumar and lang wants the last who wants the last word okay sanju verma wants nahi last word kisko chahiye okay so let mohan kumar and lang first come first and then sanju verma will have the last word amitabh tiwari's argument is it makes perfect sense to attack rahul gandhi because the more it's modi versus rahul the more it is advantage modi so he is doing what he thinks is best for him so 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 rahul i'm not disputing that i didn't even bring up that point the point i wanted to make in response to what mr tiwari said was that i think he is right when he says that 4% people only voted on caste but he means in the sense that we others voted for yadavs or jadavs voted for bsp etc that might not be happening this time but what we are talking about is the larger umbrella of backward classes and dalits not getting their rightful share this is a political issue in that sense this is not an issue of bo oh, mere caste ka banda khada hai so i am voting for him so that is where the difference lies in the interpretation okay, that's what fine, i okay final word sanju verma 10 seconds yes Oh come on, ten seconds. The only lady on the panel. I'm not going to play the woman card, but give me thirty seconds. Chalo, okay. thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to be hacked by Mr. Kumar Mangalam. I did not hack him. Oh no, you Thank will you. be. Okay, no, you are not the anchor, so please shut up. It's Rahul Kavala who's the anchor. I don't need bhashan from you. Rahul, I just have this to say. When Narendra Modi is talking of Vikasit Bharat, when Narendra Modi is talking of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, Sabka Prayas, when Narendra Modi is talking about Ek Bharat, Shreest Bharat. राहुल गांधी से कौन जात हो ऐश्वर्या राय तो नाचने वाली है वह वा अमिताभ बच्चन डांस मार रहा है लेट योर ऑडियंस जज वेदर दे वांट अ पप्पू एज देर नेक्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर और वेदर दे वांट नरेंद्र मोदी हु हैज 78 परसेंट पॉपुलैरिटी रैंकिंग्स एज द मॉर्निंग कंसल्ट डिस्पाइट बींग Prime Minister for the third time in a row. Let the audience be the judge. So I'm out of time. Here's what I wish to say in the end. In the first part of this election, it seemed as if the India Alliance was completely disintegrating. Uh, Nitish did a political somersault. Mamta Banerjee said she'll fight alone. They're trying for some kind of a last-minute approach. Now we don't know whether it'll happen. At least now, to some extent, the India Alliance is being able to, at the very basic level, get. the alliances in order it doesn't necessarily mean it will change the end result but it means that at least there is some kind of a fight just makes things slightly more exciting than if it is complete one way traffic so at least there is some punches being thrown and there are lots of counter attacks happening as well just keeps and makes these debates more interesting than it if it would just have different elements of disintegration in the india alliance so game on at least as far as this election is concerned just makes things more interesting in the newsroom and hopefully for you our viewers as well this is where i wrap up this debate